Good evening. Welcome to the meditation center. Can I have an uh, indication who is here for the first time? Okay. Well, special welcome. <laughs> Tonight's session is on hurry up, slow down. <laughs> <coughs> good, uh, what is it? Good topic for New York City. Hurry up, slow down. It is such a, what would be the word? It is such an obvious, um, can't find the word for it. Obvious scenario, no? If you walk down Fifth Avenue, what do you see? Slow? <laughs> you see everybody hurry, <laughs> everybody walking. You know how the guides, tourist guide, know the difference between a tourist and a New Yorker? A tourist just, what is it? Is <laughs> strolling, <laughs> looking here, looking there, looking here, looking there, <laughs> looking up. And a New Yorker? <laughs> Gaze in the, <laughs> in, in the far distance or on the ground and walking fast. Sometimes not even seeing whether someone is in front or not or bumping into each other. <coughs> so what is it that creates the, this mindset of always hurry, 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 always walking fast? Because if you really look at it very objectively, we end our day in the same place where we started it. Isn't it? Where do you start your day? In my bed. Where do you end your day? <laughs> so what worries in such a hurry to do <laughs> all day or to go uh, all day? So that is one thing. What are we actually doing all day? And the other thing is, um, what is it that truly is our aim? Every day. What was your aim today? To feel good? Very good. To do what we have to do, and that is? <laughs> Our whole list of to do, to do list. And okay. Uh, my aim today was to do my things on my to-do list. And tomorrow, what will be the aim? <laughs> will that to-do list have finished? Even maybe the same to-do list will be there again tomorrow. The same to-do list will be there tomorrow. Two may be off and two others may be on it. <laughs> what are we in such a hurry for? Just a question. When you are rushing, what are you in such a rush for? Sometimes you are late to go somewhere. Does rushing really help? <laughs> <laughs> most of the time, it doesn't, most of the time, sometimes it helps little, but most of the time it doesn't really help. It just makes me anxious. And when you arrive anxiously, does it give more quality to what you are supposed to be doing or going to meet? Most of the time not. Okay, so to be somewhere. What are we in such a hurry for? <laughs> huh? 
this is like driving, no? When someone drives too fast, you get a whole queue of <laughs> people who push their <laughs> uh, honking behind you, <laughs> making them upset because they are in a hurry to come where. So we are in a hurry because others are in a hurry. Very good reason. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I'm in a hurry because of fear of missing out what is going on that day. To be, even that, no, is very useful to <coughs> think how many things have happened today. Let us just take Manhattan. How many things have happened today? One thousand and ten, <laughs> maybe more. <laughs> One million than <laughs> thousand and ten. Hmm? Can we be everywhere and experience everything? Do we need to? Again, it comes down to what is my aim today? Hmm? Because this fear of missing out means I am chasing something. I'm looking for something, and I am scared I will miss out on on it for some reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. There are certain responsibilities. There are certain things we have to do. We might not want to do them, but we feel we have to do them. But why hurry? This is, <laughs> this is the question. Job, we know. We have a job. We know when is the starting time. We know it's the finishing time. We, we, we have some family gathering to go to. We know what are the times. What is the hurry? <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. We are. Uh, <laughs> it is a habit. <laughs> Excellent. This, this, uh, because we know their job. We know these things. We have to do groceries, family gatherings. This we know all those things. But what is the hurry? It is partly because it is a habit. Partly it is because everybody does it. Because if you just stroll around on Fifth Avenue and everybody rushing by your your speed kind of tend to go up if you are not conscious. We, our mind is many times very focused on future, what is to be, and we are not aware or not consciously paying attention to the present. <laughs> Excellent observation. 
we are not necessarily enjoying where we are at, and maybe not just externally, but internally. And we think if we can be somewhere else quick, we might be in a different mood also, because we are somewhere else. Yeah. It doesn't really work. That is also a very good observation. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Very good. Sometimes it's fun. Speed is fun. But that is different than hurrying. Isn't it? Because sometimes you run, sometimes you want to be fast, sometimes it is for a game. That is fine. But that is different than hurrying and rushing. Does it work? <laughs> We're in the trap. The list is bigger. in university, <coughs> you have a huge amount of things you need to do and you have a huge amount of things to study. But I remember if I would study at night, it would certain amount of study would take me two hours. And that same amount of study in the morning would take me half an hour. So, uh, as a uh, response to what you're saying, do we really need to work fast or do we want certain quality? And that quality is not, uh, what is it, synonymous with fast work or pressured working or hurried working. It has to do with a certain quality and that has to do with a certain state of mind. It is a A friend of ours says, people never time, never take the time to do things properly, but then they have to take the time to redo it. <laughs> and so you waste more time. <laughs> 
So if we just, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Knowing how to manage your time would be much more helpful than to be always in a rush, helpful and healthier. Mm. But it is, it is, it is interesting, this whole idea, because most of the things that I heard, deeper behind it is this, what now modern, uh, what is it? Modern expression for it is FOMO. Everyone familiar with this? Fear of missing out. No, this is like a new, not new, but relatively popular thing these days. Fear of missing out. Somehow we are always thinking that we will miss out. And that we have to be there more early, we have to be there quicker, we have to be there before someone else, we have to cut in line before everyone else. We Somehow this have to <laughs> is beginning to dictate our life. And that this is different from what you are saying, uh, the spirit of game, the spirit of just being fast. But of course there is this whole area with the adrenaline push that also uh, helps. But it is much of the hurry and the rush is connected with this. Now is this uh, does hurry and rushing all the time resolve fear of missing out means we're feeling that there is something out there that will add to our state of well-being. That there is something out there that we need to have or attend or achieve or, or uh, uh, find that can add to our well-being. Now, is that a reality? And if you have achieved it, will you stop hurrying? <laughs> there is always something because it is like a conditioning deeper inside. So we are as if chasing our tail all the time, <laughs> trying to get somewhere, trying to achieve something, trying to get something, trying to be someone, trying to. But all the time it continues because tomorrow it, ha it is. It is again there, and the day after tomorrow, it is again there. False expectations appearing real. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it connects with this. False expectations appearing real. Now, is there another way? And you know what? If you're rushing, what does that do to us? Or what is that a manifestation of? Or an expression of? If we're rushing all the time, I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> False. <laughs> I'm busy. There was a time when I'm busy means I'm good. <laughs> I'm busy means I'm, I'm so I'm important. That there was a time when that was kind of the flavor it got. So it means there is a need to be 
important. There is a need to be uh, uh, <laughs> not to be needed. <laughs> <laughs> what are we, what huh more demands <laughs> so it still means the need to be needed it still means i'm chasing my tail and it means <laughs> and it means okay today they need me tomorrow again they have to need me and day after tomorrow they have to need me so i'm still chasing my tail all the time but one aspect of this rush and this hurry that we many times overlook is that it means we are also rushing in here have you have you ever observed your mind when you are rushing hmm? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Very good. So it doesn't mean you can't be fast, but then it comes from a state of internal control, a state of mind that oversees and chooses certain fast walk or running. But that is different from rushing and being in a hurry all the time. And so one of the things, uh, if we continually are in a rush, continually are in a rush and a hurry, and if we continuously scared that we will lose out, it means that we do not truly know what we want. We are not truly in touch with what goes on inside of us. And there is one easy um, uh, kind of slogan that uh, can help in this. Your inner factors, or you can say inside, <coughs> are closely associated with your external behavior. And vice versa. <coughs> so if there is always this rushing mode, it means there are lots of thoughts here that might not be so calm and together and clear. And if we're always rushing, always in a hurry, always trying to get somewhere, and even at work, working faster and faster because it is never good enough, it has to be more, it has to be faster, it has to be more, there's so much to-do list, what will happen with us sooner or later? Stress, anxiety, burnout, heaviness, Lots of insecurity, dissatisfaction, hmm? your heart beat will go far Definitely there will be physical symptoms also <laughs> in the long run. <laughs> Definitely there will be some physical aspects to it also. So is that what we truly want? End up anxious, ang end up insecure, end up stressed out, end up burned out. Is that we are scared to miss out on? <laughs> so maybe our behavior is actually achieving the opposite of what we are truly deeper inside want. <coughs> is there another way 
At least we could try it out in New York City. Or experiment with it. Is there another way? But people will say, I'm doing what I want. <laughs> I'm rushing, I have to get there, I want that. In the end, they don't have peace of mind. One one way, no, definitely the present is there, but to realize that also the future is based on my present. If today, all day I am rushing and in a hurry and insecure and anxious, will my tomorrow be calm and peaceful and collected? Collected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so just to realize that even also your future, the building blocks for your future are at this moment. So your quality of your tomorrow, the quality of your tonight, your quality of the quality of your later, the quality of your future depends on the quality of this present moment also. So if, and this present moment is the only moment that is in my control. So if I make this present moment the best, and there is a next second is another present moment, and next second is another present moment. So if I make that the best now, then there is more chance that my future will be best it can be. And there is less chance I'm missing out anything. Because if I'm wishing for something in the future, I'm missing out now. Make sense? <laughs> And maybe we can tell ourselves we're not missing out anything. <laughs> yeah. Don't be too greedy. <laughs> you're not not you're not even truly missing out anything if you are truly making the best of every moment now. It is useful to first of all observe myself you know, and and work with myself because I cannot do anything for other people. But we will do what other people do if I am not uh, more conscious and aware. <coughs> but also trying to avoid future negative feelings by creating negative feelings now is not very um what <laughs> by creating all, all hyped up now 
to try and avoid some negativity in the future, I don't think it really works in the long run. No. <coughs> so what I'm trying to say, it all comes back to what am I doing at this moment in time? Internally. So have you ever observed what is going on internally? Yeah. How do you do that? Meditation. <laughs> First of all, what is this internally? And what is there to observe? Your feelings, very good. Your thoughts, very good. The, the, those are a few very obvious things that you can immediately do. What are my thoughts? What am I thinking? And what are my, my feelings? And are they useful at this moment in time? That, that is the, like the second step. No? You're observing the thoughts, and then you think, why am I thinking like that? No. And is this useful? <coughs> now, if we're rushing and hurrying, it is most probably that we're also rushing and hurrying in our mind. And a mind that is rushing and hurrying, if this is your mind, if this rushing and hurrying, uh, there will be many, 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 many thoughts. Have you ever counted how many thoughts you have when you are rushing? <laughs> now, what is the function of a thought? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? The the big you mean it's garbage? So we relive the past, you're meaning to say. So many thoughts from the past come into our mind. Okay. So what else is the function of a thought? <coughs> yeah, sometimes you want to plan certain actions, so there are thoughts of planning. Thoughts, th some, one uh, function of thoughts is to organize your day. Very good. How many thoughts you would need to organize one day? Huh? Only one? Maybe two? Maybe ten? Let's see, ten thoughts to organize your day. Are there ten thoughts in our mind the whole day? <laughs> what are the other thoughts? <laughs> Future? What future? Thoughts about the future. Okay, so how would you categorize those thoughts? Mainly it's worry, anticipation, fear, fear of missing out, anxiety, thoughts of anxiety. Sometimes there's excitement, you're going on. Thanksgiving holidays <laughs> for a cruise, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. So how would you categorize those thoughts? These thoughts of planning your day were thoughts of planning, thoughts of organizing. So these thoughts about the future, and most of it is anxiety and fear, and well, how would you call those thoughts? Negative? 
Hmm? Irrelevant thoughts. Much of it can be irrelevant. So you have thoughts of organizing. Then you have irrelevant thoughts. Then you have negative thoughts. Searching for answers, how would you call those thoughts? Hmm? Constructive thoughts. But sometimes we are searching for answers and 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 asking for answers and still searching for answers. And then we get answers and then we search again for answers. How would you call those thoughts? <laughs> Frustration. <laughs> huh? Chasing your tail. <laughs> <laughs> so there are in, in this category of irrelevant you can most of them are cyclical repetitive thoughts so a constructive thought is, is okay but then you repeat it a few hundred times it becomes absolutely irrelevant and cyclical repetitive thinking someone who Wasteful, yeah. Irrelevant or useless or wasteful thinking. Delusion of thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, very good. Delusion of thoughts. They would come but they they would come in the category of negative, I think. Delusional. Hmm? Not realistic thoughts. Okay. Longing. Yeah. 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 But it is definitely in this category, most of that. Uh, irrelevant, cyclical, useless, wasteful thinking. And much of that becomes repetitive. Because it is the same thing over and over and over and over again. Daydreaming. Um, <coughs> hmm? Wishful thoughts. Wishful thoughts. They can sometimes be constructive. They can sometimes even be negative. They can sometimes be, maybe most of the time, a bit irrelevant. But we, only we ourselves can kind of discern what kind of thought it is and, and how useful that thinking is. <coughs> because I can't really, I'm trying to think when I used to daydream, <laughs> if ever, but yeah, maybe. It was a kind of un, unrealistic longing. <coughs> and if I now look back at it, I would call it, uh, at least it was waste of my time and thinking power. I could have used that time and mental energy for other things. Well, I don't think it would have made me happy. It was a bit of a delusional happiness, maybe. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> no, not at all. Not really. <laughs> yeah, hope is okay. That is what I'm saying. I'm just looking at my own. I don't know for you. you it might be different, but I'm looking at my own. But you will, I cannot, you cannot judge for others these things. You yourself have to be clear. Um, are there any other kinds of thoughts that we might have? That would be like in the area of constructive or positive, or maybe even thoughts of organizing. 
unreasonable thought, well, I would put that more in negative area. Mm -hmm. Constructive, constructive or positive. Depends on how long it takes. Because sometimes we take three days to make one decision, then it becomes more <laughs> lots of irrelevant thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Yeah. But that would be in the area of positive and constructive, no? Or maybe even no, I would call that positive. Positive. Yeah. But uh, feelings go together with thoughts and certain thoughts yeah. and thought processes. Mm -hmm. Are there any other kinds of thoughts? Yeah, very good. Elevated thoughts. Elevated or noble thoughts or spiritual thoughts. Now, when we observe our mind, what area are we most in? Wasteful. <laughs> Wasteful, irrelevant, cyclical thinking. <clears throat> and all those things that we long for when we are rushing, we can address those things by cutting down wasteful thinking. We're trying to rush physically, trying to make up for something that we can make up for if we clean up our mind, if we clean up our act inside, if we shift to more thoughts that are just organizing, thoughts that are constructive, thoughts that are positive, thoughts that are Elevated or noble. Now, all those things need to be needed, for example. It is not really that we need to be needed. We want to be loved. We want to be valued and appreciated and respected. Now, if I clean up my mind and I have always positive and elevated thoughts, people will want to be with you all the time. Not because they need anything from you. They will just want to be in your company all the time. Because your mind and your energy is such a pleasant space to be. <coughs> if we have some backlog to catch up with for work or study or whatever it is, we will be in a better space to do that with a mind that is cleaned up. We will be more effective also. If in this mind there are all this absence of this irrelevant and cyclical spinning going on, if that is not there, if this negative spinning is not there, our mind will be free to see the beauty of the present. Our mind will be free to see the beauty of our own being and experience the beauty of our own being. Our mind will be free to see the beauty of rain, of sun, of snow, of wind, of everything. <coughs> gives a better guarantee for a pleasant free future also. Isn't it? A mind like that will not feel is missing out because a mind like that is contented in the moment.
to become aware is a very good first step or first phase. Of course, there are more dynamics to it and there are more aspects to it, but becoming aware of this is a very good first uh, um, or, or start. Because many of us, you know, we're not aware of what is going on inside of us. Because we are not taught that this is important. We are not raised with the, the, the understanding that we should take care of our mind also. We are taught to take care of our teeth and our hair and our clothes and, and whatever else, but we are not taught to take care of our mind. But how you feel and your mood and your, your uh, quality of the life experience is 100% associated with what goes on in your mind. And to start becoming aware of that, and to start to be, be, be more in control of that. And, and to start to exercise more power of choice of what you choose to think and what you choose to not think. We are not taught about those things. But that is what is with us all the time, our mind. And we are, somehow we have grown to believe that the external world decides my quality of life and the things around us and the people around us. But if we truly, truly be honest with ourselves and observe it, that is not true. Because there, there are people who are miserable, although externally they have all the privileges in the world. And there are people who are still adventurous and noble, spirited, even though they are in circumstances that are very difficult. But we are not trained, we are not taught to cultivate strength of mind. We are not trained or taught to cultivate uh, power of thought and to exercise power of thought. When, when there's no recognition of the impact of our thought on our general experience of life. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Very good. So even more this. What was it? F expectation. False expectations <laughs> appearing real. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> appearing real. <laughs> and then it almost appears as if we have to convince ourselves that we are okay. Who creates your thoughts? Who creates your thoughts? So if my thoughts are influenced by other people, it means my thoughts are on them. And my, my, my attention is all the time on them instead of on myself. And instead of on focus of generating more healthy uh, themes, to think about. 
or more healthy things to focus on. <coughs> so, <coughs> when we are all the time rushing, one thing that uh, we can observe is we are looking for something better, something higher, something more, something different. <coughs> But what we're actually trying to do is we're trying to get away from this stuffed and cluttered mind. We're trying to get a different experience and there is somehow the conditioned belief that if we are somewhere else, if we have done certain things, if we have pleased certain people, we will feel better. But if this is the condition of my mind, it doesn't matter. I will still feel. <laughs> exactly. I will still feel the way my thought processes are. Even if other people are happy with what I am doing, I will still be insecure. Even if people praise me, even if people love me, even if I have achieved all those things, but if this is the condition of the mind, I will still feel unpleasant. Because the way I feel is, is uh, what is it, absolutely uh, connected and associated with how I think and what I think. Our own thinking and our thinking processes and thinking patterns is what makes us feel stressed or even depressed, unloved. Mm. No, definitely. One moment, no? let me first. <coughs> it is a good start to become aware no? and to observe, but not to leave it with that. Uh, to actively, actively generate constructive thoughts, to actively create elevated or more noble thoughts and act on those. Yeah. 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 Hey, you don't have to wait till they come to replace them also. <laughs> you can start generating more constructive thoughts and there are simple simple practices for that. For example, the whole area of the practice of gratitude is one area to kind of shift the energy of your mind around. You know, and the example we often give is the subway. We are so easily conditioned into thinking very neg negatively and very wasteful about the subway and our commute. True or not true? <laughs> we complain about the subway. I don't know how many curses the subway system receives every day. <laughs> But that same subway system transports millions of people. And most of those millions of people haven't done anything to create that subway system. <laughs> and we still use it. And if it doesn't work, we won't get half of the things done that we want to do. But still we curse it. We can also feel blessed. Such an intricate system is there. I did not think to contribute to that. And it functions every day. Of course, sometimes there are things, but what can you expect? So many people using it. Every six minutes, an another one comes. There is never any real big accident. This is a little miracle that is going on. And there are many others. 
So that same thing and that same situation, if I just shift my perspective a little bit, my thoughts are different and my feelings are different. Now who did this? Did they pass some law in Congress and some legislation that my thoughts are different? No. <laughs> this is just me using my sense my reasoning power, and using the power of thought to generate different feelings. Now, if I do that, I, I, I generate more healthy thoughts, and I generate more healthy feelings, that will make me internally stronger. Isn't it? It will make me internally stronger. Now, who did that? And I didn't have to wait for anything, and I did not have to wait for the subway system to change to do that. Understand? Now, there are situations that might not be so easy. There are situations that will pull your mind more. Agreed. But there are many day-to-day -day moments that I can sh be in a different frame of mind and therefore be more empowered and internally more healthy to deal with that situation that is more heavy on my plate. But many little, little silly things will make it spiral us down and make us weak without anything big ever even coming on the plate. So when that big thing comes, we're definitely completely devastated. Because we're, we're already in that downward spiral of useless, wasteful, even negative thinking for simple daily things. The internal rushing that goes on. And so nothing is done with quality. No quality of thinking, no quality of feeling. So what is the purpose of life? Just rushing and catching our, what is it, chasing our own tail? <laughs> One moment, she, she was first. Okay. This is another area, no, I, I'm not saying all those gadgets, they are useful and they have their function. But aren't we overusing it? Aren't we overthinking and overvaluing things? Well, I am not that old, but when I was young, there was no <laughs> social media. <laughs> and the quality of life at that time was not less than it was now, at all. So, <clears throat> that is another area where there are lots of useless thoughts. And that is in my hand. How to use our Facebook, how to use your Twitter, how to use whatever, and we don't even have to have all ten of them. For what? To communicate? <laughs> Have all those things made our communication better? <laughs> and fear of missing out what they are doing. <laughs> But the thing is, if we fear m of missing out those things, we are missing out what is going on right now in my own life. <laughs> yeah. no, and, no, they, and they, they uh, you are as if depriving yourself.
from your own presence. You're depriving yourself from your own company. And then we feel lonely. <laughs> Loneliness is another big thing. People feel very lonely and empty. But it is because we are not aware of our own inner world and our own power to be our own best friend. Yeah, but who is making that world and who is consuming it? We ourselves. Yeah, yeah. but we are victims of ourselves. <laughs> because that is the thing, no? We, 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 we can blame those who make the commercials, but they wouldn't be making them if we are not the ones consuming them and asking for it. We cannot blame anyone truly for the state of our inner world. And even if you find someone to blame, they also did what they could based on their condition of their own internal world. So I can start with me and shift it around. And there are many simple, simple methods for that. Every time, every day, take some time to reflect. Now this word of aim. Now Mita was saying, my aim is to be happy, to feel good. Do I really need something out there to feel good? Do I? No? So how can I feel good now? Yeah, very good. Choose good thoughts. Simple answer. Choose good thoughts. Clean up that <laughs> closet. <laughs> Empty out the closet. And once this is this is more organized and more filled with nice goodies. <coughs> How will you feel? Powerful. Calm. Secure. Grateful. Content. Yeah, very good. And you didn't need anything or anyone outside for that. You have more space to have fun. Yeah, very good. Experiment with this. There is infinite power in thought, in the negative direction, but also in the positive and the constructive direction. <coughs> yeah. yeah. On all levels, on all levels, the quality of your experience of life will shift tremendously if you clean up this. And of course there are more things and there is there are more angles to all of this. But this is a very easy, hands-on and in your control way to start. Hang ornaments <laughs> inside. <laughs> Someone put up their hand. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Very good. 
very good. There is a, this is deeper behind, and so there is much more wisdom behind what we just were discussing today. But that is a deeper aspect to observe and to play with. What is your sense of identity? Because your aim and your aim in life in general is directly connected with your sense of identity and who you truly are. <clears throat> and maybe just a few words about that. Who am I, truly? Because what you think and what you do in life is directly connected and related to your sense of identity and your feeling of who you are. And the way you take life is also directly connected with your deeper sense of identity. <coughs> now, to give a simple example, if I think I am a what? A doctor. I write doctor, doctor. O R. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> if my strong sense of identity is I am a doctor, then all my thoughts will be around the medical things. Uh, around the position of doctor, about the, 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 the uh, you, I will see in everyone a potential patient. <laughs> I will see also the salary of the doctor. And so the, 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 my thoughts and my thoughts processes will largely be around doctor. If my sense of identity around this position is a big one, is a strong one, then much of my thinking will be around this. So even when I'm talking to my friends, I will look at the color of their skin and are they looking healthy or not healthy, is something sick going on or not sick. And so my, my vision and my attitude also will be colored by my sense of identity and my thinking and thoughts will be in that area. So someone uh, will want to talk about music and ballet. This identity will be bored with that because you want to talk and think about doctor and patients and illness and medicine. And he doesn't have time for, for music. <laughs> feel bored. His identity will be bored. <coughs> if someone comes along who just had a bad uh, experience with his doctor and start criticizing doctor, <laughs> this one will feel insulted and offended. And maybe may angry if my sense of identity is this. Understand this? And lots of thoughts, why did they say like that? How come this is not true? There are so many doctors who are good. Why do they defame doctors? All these thoughts will be in the mind. If my sense of identity around position is a big one. And I forgot that there was a time when I was no doctor. <laughs> So who was I then? If this sense of identity is big, I will completely forget about that. And the moment doctor has to retire, that is big depression. Because this identity will feel, I'm nothing, I'm no one, I'm that. So lots of our thoughts, is very much associated with our sense of identity. And doctor is one simple one, but there are many. Now in the spiritual context, the understanding is, is you are a spiritual being. A spiritual being that is invisible. 
a spiritual being that has divine and higher potential. And that spiritual being is here as a visitor. That spiritual being travels and uses this body for a life experience. That spiritual being is a player of the game of life. And that spiritual being will continue after this perishes. Now if that spiritual identity is strong within my consciousness, then thoughts and feelings and vision and attitude will be decided by that spiritual identity. And then we will play the role of a doctor. We will play the role of a mother. We will play the role of a citizen. We will play the role of a female. But it will not obsess my thoughts and obsess my feelings. So this, this uh, whole subject of your... And, and these identities are ego. No? <coughs> All these egos within us, they have their own ideas and priorities and desires and needs. And that is what makes us rush. And this one will feel he's missing out all the time when no one notices that he is a doctor. And so he will, will always be pushing. And anything, so in the subway, he will feel he's missing out because he's not being able to be a doctor and no one knows he's a doctor and someone even pushes him disrespectfully. So this one feels... <laughs> <laughs> feels stressed out and uncomfortable. Mothers, yeah. yeah. Because the identity of mother has been created and been so strong so that when children are not there, it is as if She's nothing, yeah. yeah. But she, there was a time when there were no children, and she was still someone. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Excellent. These are good observations. So deeper insight, not to as if, but this is deeper practices and deeper uh, uh, understandings. And of course, that first part is already very big and useful step. Observe your thoughts, shift around your thoughts, play with that. But if you deep, if you want to really put things right at a deeper level. You have to come to this. Who am I and what is truly my model of life with which I live? And that will shift your thoughts to a whole different level of spiritual thoughts. And feelings and emotions that will come will have a different quality also then. And then rushing on Fifth Avenue will appear a bit silly. <laughs> but if you need to, for whatever reason, be fast, fine. But it is a choice, not a habit or some anxious uh, copied behavior uncontrolled by the self. So slowing down, real slowing down, means slowing down here. And not just slowing down, but also choosing quality of thinking. Because useless or negative thinking usually is fast and not, but you don't want to slow down negative thinking. You want to shift it <laughs> to, 
something more constructive. And to also reflect on this theme, no, this uh, idea of your future is based on your present. So if you want your future to be of the best quality, then pay attention to put the best quality in the present moment. And in the present moment doesn't mean externally necessarily, but let it begin internally. Put the highest quality in this moment at the level of your thinking and your consciousness and your sense of identity and your attitude. That will manifest in your actions externally. And that is the building block for your future. Does it make sense? <coughs> so what can you do practically? Maybe, yeah, who we truly are and be more aware of the quality of that inner world. Because not only it might come with us, but even if it, whatever that time will happen, we will see. But your mind and your thoughts is with you all the time, 24-7. So what is the quality of that now also? Hmm? Pay attention to that. Okay, so let's close with some moment of silent. <coughs> As we keep the body comfortable, let the breathing be natural and regular. And just become aware of this present moment, the atmosphere in this hall, the kind of stillness and quiet. Become aware of the position of the body, the breathing and the heartbeat. And 
become aware of the one who is using this body, the inner being, the being of consciousness, the one who is creating thoughts and feelings. And we can locate this inner self behind the eyes, in the center of the forehead. And we could use the image of light, star of light. And I observe the thoughts. At this moment, thoughts are slow. Thoughts are of the self enjoying this quiet, peaceful state of being. Thoughts are of the self being, this being of light and peace. And just consciously holding my thoughts in these kind of themes not allowing distractions of what will happen later tonight. No. It is pleasant to be focused on this present moment and to appreciate every second appreciate this body as a precious vehicle appreciate the company of like-minded people appreciate the stillness and the quiet in the atmosphere. How pleasant. To just be. And appreciate. The quiet real me. What is life for if it is not to enjoy and to appreciate the gift of every moment. And as I gradually choose to And this thought experiment and this observing consciously my thoughts, I aim to kind of hold this light and more internal observing stage 
as I go through the rest of the evening. Thank you. For those who are here for the first time, uh, if you want to uh, receive our programs on the desk, there is a, a mailing list. You could leave your email. And there is a little suite specially made with love and peace and silent and meditative consciousness for everyone. Enjoy the holidays. Next weekend, uh, the center will be closed for Thanksgiving. But every Thursday we have this, except Thanksgiving Thursday. <laughs> <laughs>